Exchange rate pass-through is an important concept because it relates to the competitiveness of one country's exports versus another country's. So let's see about how exchange rate pass-through affects business in practice. Let's say we have this example where we have a shipping container company, um, a, sh a shipping company that produces these big container ships. And they're based in Norway, so they sell their ships in Kroner, based in Kroner. Each ship costs 850 million kroner. If we wanted to figure out what that's worth in terms of US dollars, we can take the spot rate of kroner versus USD, 8.55, and convert. Since this is really, we could look at this as being kroner versus USD in terms of the ship price, and this is kroner USD in terms of the spot exchange rate, then we know that we can take the two numbers and then just divide them by each other to get what the ship cost would be in USD. Another way to look at that is if you're wondering whether I should multiply or divide to go from kroner to USD, one way to think about it logically is that one USD buys more kroner. So if I'm going to go the other way, from kroner to USD, I know that this number should decrease. And so that's how I know that instead of multiplying by this, 8.55, I should divide by instead. And the number that you get when you do that is approximately $99,415,200 per ship in US. So this shipping company sells, is based in Norway, but sells all throughout the world, sells in dollars, sells in yen, sells to American companies, sells to Japanese ones. The trouble is that, you know, if they're producing in Norway, all their costs are in Norwegian kroner. What happens if the spot rate moves up? That is to say, what happens if the new spot rate between the Norwegian kroner versus the USD is such that it's, say, 8.90 kroner per USD? So now the USD is stronger, buying more kroner. What happens to the cost of the ship? in the US market. Still costs the same to produce in terms of kroner, except that when it goes and gets sold in the US market, under that new exchange rate, it now becomes cheaper. 95 million, about a $4 million discount relative to what it was before the kroner weekend. And that's why you see sometimes these political economic issues about a country weakening its currency competitively. That is, a country weakening its currency in order to boost exports. But what happens if it goes the other way around? Instead, the Norwegian kroner doesn't weaken, but instead strengthens. Here, supposing the kroner goes to 8, so that 1 USD buys fewer kroner, the new price of the ship is going to be 106 million, 250,000. So it's increased by almost seven million dollars as a result of the stronger kroner, and that's a problem. The shipping company could lose a lot of business if it tries to sell its ships in the United States for this significantly increased price. The company, in other words, doesn't have the option of passing through all of its exchange rate effect that just occurred. Perhaps, for example, it's gauged its customers in the United States and realized that it can only raise prices, it can only pass through not this full 55 cent change in exchange rates, but only say half of that, a 50% pass through or a 27.5 kroner per USD 0.275 kroner per USD difference. In this case, the company, because it knows that it can't raise prices fully to offset this adverse exchange rate movement, will only raise prices by half the amount of the exchange rate movement itself. Because it knows that if it raises prices too much, then its US customers simply just won't buy. Maybe they'll buy from another country that also produces these ships, but has a weaker exchange rate at the moment. And so perhaps they've decided that they can pass through some, but not all, 
of this exchange rate effect when repricing their ships in US dollars. This is a common international business problem, how to pass through exchange rate changes to customers.